This is video two of 6-1, continuing our discussion on the standard normal distribution. So prior to this video, or the video before this one, uh, we talked about calculating the area under the curve of a standard normal distribution. Uh, with this video, um, we're going to talk about calculating or finding a value on the axis uh, of a standard normal distribution given an area. So again, I, I wanna emphasize when you have a standard, a normal distribution, it doesn't have to be a standard normal. When you have a, a normal distribution, uh, you have the values on the axis and these values can be Z scores or they can be X values. Um, and then you also have the area that's under the curve. So those are like the, the two quantities that we'll be dealing with when it comes to a standard normal distribution or a normal distribution in general. All right. <clears throat> and when you're, when you're calculating an area under the curve, uh, the function that you're going to use, so let's say we're, we're, we're calculating the area under the curve, like that's the unknown. The function we're going to use is normal CF. And whenever you're calculating a value that's on the axis, so let's say this is a value that's on the axis that's unknown, the function we're going to use is called inverse norm. The two functions are inverse functions of each other. So normal CDF is used to find an area under the curve. Inverse norm is the inverse function of normal CDF. It's used to find an area, I'm sorry, a, a value that's on the axis, right? This is the an axis. Okay, um, so to access or to locate the inverse norm function um, on your calculator, it's, it's a, where all the distribution functions are located, which you guys should be familiar with by now. But we're gonna press second vars and it's the third function, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into a problem just so you guys are familiar with when to use it. So for example, um, in this problem, we're asked to find the indicated z-score. Again, whenever we're dealing with a standard normal distribution, we're really dealing with the distribution of z-scores. So, and then it says, uh, assume that it's a standard normal distribution, right? So we know that when it's a standard normal distribution, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And so for this problem, we're given the area to the left right here. This area right here is 0 0.0193. And we're asked to find um, that z-score, that value here that separates this area to the left. All right. So in a situation like that, we're going to use inverse norm. Inverse norm takes, in, uh, takes three inputs. The first one... Uh, is the area to the left. So what I'm gonna call the left area. Uh, the second input is the mean, and the third input is sigma. Now, this area right here, um, it's for most of your calculators, for most version of, well, most calculators that I see a lot of students use, it's the area to the left. There is a certain um, version or uh, model of the TI-84 where it's a little bit more advanced where you can choose whether you want the area to the left, the center, or the right. Uh, so for for uh, this, this video and moving forward, I'm only going to, whenever I say input the, the area, the, I'm going, uh, what I mean, if I don't say area to the left, that's what I mean. It's always going to be the area to the left. That's how my calculator, the TI-84 here, is programmed. Um, your calculator, the newer one, there's actually a newer version, the TI-84CE, uh, where you can specify whether it's an area to the left or right. All right, so if you have the, 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 old, the newer version, newer than this one, uh, just if you want to make sure, if you want to be sure that you have um, the correct answer, just choose area to, to the left and you should be good. Okay, so, uh, so for this problem, again, we're gonna use inverse norm because we're trying to calculate an area, I'm sorry, we're trying to find a value on the axis. So we're gonna press second vars and we're gonna go to inverse norm. So the area, again, the area is the area to the left. And what I mean is that uh, when you cut this, like let's say you, we're looking for this score, this value here, if you cut it like this, I'm talking about the area to the left of that, that cut, right? All right, and, and in this case, that's 0 0.0193. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one, so that looks good. 
So we're going to press base, and there it is. So that's what that's the z-score that separates um, an area of 0 0.0193 to the left. So this is approximately 2, negative 2.07. Okay, number two. So number two, let me go ahead and zoom in. So again, we're looking for a value on the axis. We're looking for the value on the axis here that separates an area of 0 0.921 on the right of that value. So this value, if, again, if we cut it like that, if we take that normal distribution and we cut it like that, we're, look, we're, we're given this area to the right of 0 0.921 and we're looking for that value here, that value on the axis there. Okay, so again, anytime we're looking for a value on the axis, we're gonna use inverse norm. So we're gonna go second vars, inverse norm. And now let me show you the wrong thing to do. This is the incorrect thing to do. Why is that? <clears throat> because we, the area here, we wanna put the area to the left. So we cannot put this one the 0 0.921 because that's not going to give us the correct answer. Uh, I'll I'll do the it correct and then I'll go ahead and do it the wrong way so you guys can see uh, what it looks like. So really, we need to put this area right here, the one on the left. Again, that's just the way that the the program was designed. The way that the program was designed is they want an area to um, the left. So to get the area to the left, well, we know that the entire area here is equal to one, right? We know that to be true. So to get the area to the left, all we have to do is do one, oops, all we have to do is get do one minus the area to the right to get the, uh, the left side. So that's gonna be, so let me exit out of this. So that's gonna be one minus 0.921, uh, which is uh, approximately or equal to 0 0.079. <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna input. So we're gonna go second vars, inverse norm, 0 0.079. <clears throat> uh, one thing you can do as well, let's say that uh, you want to, instead of doing this subtraction like on the uh, outside of this and then bring this value in here, you can just type in the expression uh, like that as well. And, and that would be fine. Either way would be fine. For this purpose, I'll just put that and then I'll press paste. And that value is negative, so approximately negative 4 point, sorry, 1.41. Okay, so now let me show you guys what would happen if I don't do the minus one. So if you go down to inverse norm, and let's say you don't put the minus one, you forget, you put the 0.921, and then you go down here and paste. Now I get positive 1.41 which is very similar. So in other words, what happened is you just found the positive value over here, which is which kind of mirrors because this is a mirror image of each other. These are it's a normal distribution, right? And it's a reflection of each other. You you found the positive. Now it's okay if you found found this and then you know that it's supposed to be negative and you put a negative, but it's always a good practice to put the area to the left because later on when when this is not a standard normal, again, standard normal is where the mean is zero, standard deviation is one, that trick will not work. So that trick of getting the this value and then changing it to a negative will not work. So, uh, and another way that you can tell that if, if you'd made this mistake, another way you can tell that you made a mistake is you got a positive number. And we know we're not gonna get a positive number. We know we should get a negative number. How do we know that? Because we know that the middle value, the mean, the middle value in here, in the, uh, this distribution, should be zero. So if this is zero here, we expect this number to be a negative. And if you get a positive, that's a red flag that you did something wrong. <clears throat> All right, so this one's pretty simple, right? All you're gonna do is just put in this one as your, uh, this value as your area to the left. Again, you're using inverse norm because you're trying to find a value on the axis. Uh, this problem, uh, very similar to um, the one up here, number two, you're going to do one minus, right? You should do one minus point 0028. Let's go ahead and do that one real fast. So we know we're going to use inverse norm because we're trying to find a value on the axis. So we're going to go second vars, inverse norm. So again, we can just type in the expression just like that. Paste. 
and there it is. So we get approximately 2.77. And we know we should get a positive number, right? We know we should get a positive number because, because it's on the right side. Here's zero, here's a positive number. And again, if you don't put, um, if you don't do the subtract one, then for sure you're gonna get a negative number and that should be a red flag because you don't, you shouldn't expect a negative number. Okay, so that's inverse norm. So the, the last part of this video um, is covering something called the critical value. So critical value, uh, for now, uh, critical Z value for Z distribution, uh, which is a standard normal distribution. Uh, just while I'm saying that, you're gonna often hear me say Z distribution. The Z distribution, whenever I say Z distribution, all I'm saying is uh, the, I'm referring to the standard normal distribution. So standard normal distribution is a normal distribution where the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And I, it's referred to as a Z distribution because it's the distribution of Z scores. <clears throat> All right, so back to critical values. So critical Z value is a Z score separating Z scores that are significantly low or significantly high. So for now, you don't necessarily have to master this uh, definition, but just know that the critical values is pretty critical, right? It's pretty important. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at two different critical values in this section. Later on, we're going to look at other ones for other distributions as well. But whenever you see the, the notation Z sub alpha, uh, that is the Z score separating an area of alpha to the right of a standard normal distribution. So for example, uh, for a problem like this, where um, we're looking at Z sub 0 0.01. So alpha is equal to 0 0.01, right? That's what I highlighted there. Uh, conceptually, what this is, is um, it is the Z score. Again, it is the Z score that separates an area of alpha. So in this case, alpha is 0 0.01 to the right of a standard normal distribution. <clears throat> so given a standard normal distribution, Standard norm, norm, normal distribution tells us that the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. What Z sub, what Z sub 0 0.01 is, it's, it's the Z score that separates an area of 0 0.01 to the right. And because we're used, we're trying to find a, a value down here, right? A value on the axis, on this horizontal axis, we know we're gonna use inverse norm. Okay, and then the area to the left uh, is 1 minus 0 0.01, which is going to be 0.99. The mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So let's go ahead and, and figure that out. So we're going to go second vars, inverse norm, 0.99, paste, press enter, and there it is. So this is approximately... Uh, 2.33. So again, I'm rounding to two decimal places as the instruction suggested. All right, so for this problem right here, so Z sub 0 0.14. So very similarly, uh, what this is, is it's the Z score, right? It, it is the Z score in a standard normal distribution. It is the Z score that separates an area of point. 14, 0 0.14, right? So I'm looking for that z-score. So very similar to what I did over here, how I'm gonna find that is I'm gonna use inverse norm, right? So second, second vars, that, and then that's gonna be 0 0.86, right? Alternatively, uh, all I did there was I did one minus 0 0.14. Uh, you could put the expression itself like that. Oops, let me try that again, one minus 0 0.14. That's fine, paste, and then I get that. I get a z-score, the z sub 0 0.14. That critical value is approximately equal to 1.08. Uh, just like this is z sub 0 0.01. All right, so this one, uh, you guys should get the hang of it. You know, doing those two um, is good practice. You should get, you should know how to do this one. So let's look at, let's take a, well, before I do that, so if this is this will become very important when in chapter seven when we look at 
um, estimating a population parameter. So kind of bookmark this page because we're we're going to come back to this when we get into chapter seven. Um, but the easy way without drawing all of this, the easy way to figure out Z sub alpha is um, this is equal to and I'm struggling to put write this down somewhere. So let me go ahead and write it down up here. So Z sub alpha, the easy way is the inverse norm, use inverse norm, right? We're going to use inverse norm to find Z sub alpha. And in the left area, we're going to do 1 minus alpha. Again, we're assuming that this is the left area. For those of you guys who have the newer 84, with the TI-84 plus CE, you have to specify that it's the left area, the area to the left. All right, so 1 minus alpha, and then 0 is the mean, 1 is the standard deviation. So if, if you forget all of this and you just know that for Z sub alpha, you're going to use inverse norm, and then in the area to the left, you're going to do 1 minus alpha, for whatever alpha is, and the mean is zero, standard deviation is one, you would get the right answer. Uh, for this other critical value, z sub alpha divided by two, uh, if we take the same uh, approach to just figuring th this out without doing the whole uh, picture or diagram, z sub alpha uh, divided by two is equal to inverse norm. And then in the input, I'm sorry, the area to the left input, that's going to be 1 minus alpha divided by 2, 0, 1. And that would give you the answer. Doing this would give you the answer. All right. So for, for this, for the first one, this was the subscript. And then for the second one, the subscript is alpha divided by 2. I want to emphasize that because a lot of students, they, they mistakenly find Z sub alpha and then divide the whole value by 2. That's not what that is. So what this notation is, is... This z sub alpha divided by 2 is the subscript. That is the subscript. So l let me go ahead and and um, let's do let's change this modify number 3 to be something like this. So let, let's pretend that uh, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And the question is asking us to find z, z sub alpha divided by 2. So I'm modifying that question to be like that. Uh, so in this case, alpha is given to us as 0 0.05. So we're going to do, that's Z sub 0 0.05 divided by 2. So without drawing the picture, I can use the I can use that right there, right? I know I'm going to use inverse norm. So I know I'm going to use inverse norm. And on the area, I'm going to do 1 minus uh, 0 0.5 divided by 2. And the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and punch that into the calculator. I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're going to go second bars, inverse norm. In the area, I'm going to just type it just like that. 1 subtract 0 0.05 divided by 2. Just like that. And that's my answer. So this would be approximately 1.96. Okay, so that completes this video. Uh, I, I highly suggest you complete these review problems. These review problems, they serve as a, the purpose for these is for you to know how to distinguish between using inverse norm and normal CDF. Uh, actually, if you if you want to pause the video and work this out, I'll work this out um, along. Uh, I'll work this out in this video as well. So here's how you would perform these problems. So the 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 instruction says find the area under the curve or the indicated z-score depending on what you're given. So it says round area to four decimal places and round z-scores to two decimal places. So as you guys recall, when you're given a normal distribution, when you're trying to find an area under the curve, so when you're trying to find an area under the curve, you're going to use normal CDF. The function you're going to use is normal CF. However, if you're trying to find a value on the axis, right? Again, there's two quantities that we're working with. We have the values on the axis, the horizontal axis, and then we have the percentages or the, the area under the curve, right? So if you're looking for a, a value on the axis, we're going to use the function inverse norm. So for example, this first one, we are given the um, value on the axis here that cuts this part off 
and this part right here is unknown. The area here is unknown. I should have put a question mark here just to indicate that this is um, an unknown that we're trying to find. So here we're trying to find an area as opposed to a value on the axis. So we know we're going to use um, normal CDF, right? So with normal CDF, so we're going to go second bars, normal CDF, we need a lower bound. So the lower bound is the, the leftmost point under the shaded region. So the leftmost point under the shaded region would be negative, negative 1.6. And the upper, so the rightmost point under the shader region, well, as you guys will recall, this shades indefinitely to the right. So theoretically, the um, upper bound is uh, positive infinity, but we're going to use a very large number to kind of replace that, right? You just gotta have to go far enough to the right. So that's the area right there. So the area is, is approximately, approximately, 0.95, oops, 0.9452. Okay, so for the second problem, we're given the area of this shaded region and we're trying to find a value on the axis, on this horizontal axis. So that tells us that this is an inverse norm problem, problem, right? So this one over here was normal CDF. Okay, and for inverse norm, the input, the first input is the area to the left. So we're going to go second bars, inverse norm. So the area to the left, again, when I mean what I mean by area to the left is if I'm going to cut the normal distribution, this normal distribution uh, where, where I'm for the value that I'm trying to find, this is the area to the left, this is the area to the right. So I'm always going to want to put the area to the left. And for this instance, I know what it is. That's 0.9554. Right. The mean is zero, standard deviation is one, because this is a standard normal distribution. And I get that, that's the, my answer. So the z-score, again, these are z-scores because this is a standard normal distribution, is approximately 1.70. Okay, so for this one, for this one, let's see. I know the, I know the uh, value down here on the axis, it's the area that's, um, is unknown. So I know that whenever I'm looking for an area that's unknown, I'm going to use normal CDF. All right, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And then for this one, um, I know I'm, I, I don't know this area. So again, I'm, I'm going to use normal CDF. Uh, for this one, I don't know. I'm looking for the value on the axis. So I know I'm going to use inverse norm. Again, for this one, I, I want to caution you. You have to put the area, you have to input the area to the left. So in other words, I know this area here, that's 0 0.0046, but I'm not going to input that. I'm going to put the area to the left, which is 1 minus 0 0.0046. And then for this one, same thing uh, as uh, this one, I'm going to use normal CDF. So these are the answers for all um, six of these problems if you want to check uh, your answers against mine. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.